the secret to hearing the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, Today, if you will hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion, in the days of trial in the wilderness. Hebrews 3, verse 7 to 8. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Revelation 3, verse 22. From 1643 to 1653, there was a movement to help to restructure the Church of England to a more sound biblical doctrine, and for those ten years, over 120 ministers would assemble together to produce a new form of church government. It would be based on a confession of faith or a statement of belief that would lay a long-lasting biblical foundation for the church and to preserve the tradition of the ancient church fathers for generations to come. It would be called the Westminster Confession of Faith and Catechism. I want to quote from it to show an aspect that was considered very important. It is required of those that hear the word preached, that they attend upon it with diligence, preparation and prayer, examine what they hear by the scriptures, receive the truth with faith, love, meekness and readiness of mind as the word of God, meditate and confer with it, hide it in their hearts and bring forth the fruit of it in their lives. With this in mind, let's follow the guidance of these faithful ancient churchmen to help us learn how to hear the word of God. To accomplish this, I'm going to have to challenge all of us to do three very simple things. I want everyone to consider to look up, to look out and to look in. Let's begin by looking up. When we look up to hear the things of God or the voice of God, the first thing that we realize is that how God sees the world is completely different than anybody you've ever known before. He that cometh from above is above all, and he that is of the earth is earthly, and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. John 3 verse 31 Most likely many of you have had this experience, where you had the view from an incredible skyscraper or tall building looking down onto a large city below you. From below, the sounds and the noises and everything around you gives a different view to things, but when you have a perspective that is above, everything looks so different. So when we talk about hearing the voice of God, we need to understand God's perspective is completely different than humanity's perspective. No matter how much you respect the voice of humanity, God's perspective is completely different because according to Isaiah 66, heaven is his throne and earth is his footstool. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye built unto me, and where is the place of my rest? Isaiah 66 verse 1 God will always give very clear instructions to his people, but we always believe that we are better than God and ignore them. In the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve clearly heard the voice of God. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. Genesis 2 verse 16 to 17 Very clear commandments, right? But what happens in the next chapter? We see humanity fall into sin. God communicated with the man. He communicated with the woman. And what we see is a pattern that even if our situation is good or bad, the Lord is always willing to speak into our lives and to guide us into all righteousness. Therefore, the question isn't if he wants to speak. The question is, do we want to listen? Look up and align yourself with God's perspective. Look out. Look out for strange voices that claim to know God, but are actually voices of demons. Here are a few questions to help us with identifying false teachings. A. Does it agree with the Bible and the Gospel message? Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Luke 21 verse 33 But though we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. Galatians 1 verse 8 B. Does it make us more like Jesus Christ? For a lot of people, they want God to make them more money and not more like Jesus Christ. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians 2 verse 5 But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, 
devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that makes peace. James 3, verse 14 to 18. C. Does your church believe it or confirm it? To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3, verse 10. D. Is it consistent with how God does things? God laid for us the foundation through his chosen people, so that we might know how to properly live a victorious Christian life. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Ephesians 2 verse 10 Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Romans 12 verse 6 e. Does it allow accountability? False teachers hate judgment, and they hate their evil works exposed by the light. But why dost thou judge thy brother, or why dost thou set an out thy brother? For we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, so then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Romans 14, 10 and 12 f. Is it convicting rather than entertaining to our fleshly desires? If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. 1 John 1 verse 9 to 10 G. Do you sense something wicked and evil about it? For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 and finally, look in. Look into the word of God, study it, meditate on it, pray it, put yourself into the story and memorize it. But he said, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Luke 11 verse 28. Time after time we go our own way, like sheep to slaughter. But what does God do? He descends down to communicate with us. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John 1 verse 10 to 14.